Greetings, unsettled souls! Welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. doing political commentary for the media speaks. Um, and also giving you the 12 days of Christmas as you've been getting all along. You will be getting a bit of a Christmas story after this is over. And I'll be doing one after midnight, keeping with the 12 days of Christmas. It's been much harder than you would think to do this. You, you're not used to doing little tiny shows every night. You end up forgetting them. Uh, very happy to see that I have viewers on here. All of this is brought to you by The Day the Lights Went Out, by D. Allen Ross. He has uh, been, a, been with the show for a couple weeks now. Hopefully all of you are buying his book because it's awesome and uh, great to see. Hey, what else is great to see? How about uh, the fact that Donald J. Trump is now officially our leader? That's true. He has. Uh, so some of the electors did not vote for Trump. Or they chose instead to vote for Colin Powell, who wasn't even running. Somebody voted for spa the Faith the Spotted Eagle. That means uh, they basically weren't going to support Trump, but they weren't going to ruin his. The reason they do this is they don't want to ruin his chances to be president because they made a promise as electors to go with the will of the people. However, they personally didn't like Trump, so they voted for something like Mickey Mouse that had no choice of winning, but then they could, you know, with good conscience say, hey, I didn't do it, which makes sense. I mean, how many of us voted for Gary Johnson for much the same reason? In uh, 2012, we didn't want the blood on our hands of Obama or the other idiot Romney. Listen to this, uh, dailymail.co.uk. Trump wins the Electoral College as attempts to cause rebellion turn to a farce with Democrats deserting Hillary. Wonderful news. Um, Bill Clinton was a member of New York's Electoral College and was in Albany to cast a vote for his wife. Um, no word as if he uh, maybe penned in uh, an intern for a vice presidential slot. We don't really know that. Uh, Donald Trump officially crossed the line to 270 electoral votes with the electors in Texas casting a ballot for the Republican shortly after 5.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is remarkable news. Calls for Trump to be voted down by members of the Electoral College were roundly ignored on Monday, thankfully, with only two faithless Republican electors rejecting the president-elect and four deserting Democrat Hillary Clinton. So. Clinton lost more electors than Trump did. You know why? I, mean, I can give you one reason as to maybe why. People do not like to hear another person whine. And Hillary Clinton is a particularly whiny person. And I am dead serious when I say this. Her whining with Jill Steining, Steining whining about Trump and trying to get all of his electors out and people rioting in the streets, many of whom didn't even vote, People got hella sick of that, and it actually cost her in the long run. Trump applauded his victory when the scheme didn't work and flaunted it in front of the media because uh, several more electors tried to ditch the Democratic loser in an effort to pressure Republicans into doing the same. Today marks a historic electoral landslide victory in our nation's democracy, he said in a statement to reporters. I thank the American people for their overwhelming vote to elect me as their next president of the U.S. So, um, I'll tell you what, friends, a lot of people have a problem with the Electoral College. And if you're one of those people, then you know what? Spend the next four years to get it changed. Now, this, the, you know, that's what the Constitution is written for. You can change it if you don't like it. Now, there are two sides to the Electoral, co electoral College, and we're going to address that here. The first side, the first, the first part of this, are those who um, are saying that the Electoral College is antiquated. The reason that they say that is because it was done during a time when it was very, very hard to communicate over vast differences, distances. However, that is not the only reason we have the Electoral College. If we did not have the Electoral College, and again, I'm not saying that I'm in favor of getting rid of it, you would have a danger of the powerhouses, New York, California, and Texas, and maybe Florida, 
of having so many people that their say goes against everybody else's in the country, and in essence, you've got three states picking the President of the United States. Um, I'm actually kind of in favor of getting rid of the Electoral College, and I'll tell you why. I don't think it should be up to states. Um, one person, one vote. And whoever gets the most votes wins. Now you're saying, Sam, that would cost you Donald Trump if that was to have happened, because Hillary won the popular vote. That is not true when you factor out the number of illegal aliens and dead people that voted for Hillary Clinton. When you do that, you find out that Trump's actually won by a couple million votes. That is a correct view, and that is a fact. Uh, friends, uh, moving on here, the peaceful side of Islam shows its face once again. Yahoo News, gunman who shot Russian ambassador was an off-duty police officer, sources say. Uh, but, yeah, you know what else the security sources should be telling you? That he was screaming Allah Akbar when he did it. Okay, you can watch the video. Uh, Christelle pointed this out. It looks as though he, he was shot in the front, which is very, and obviously the guy was standing behind him, so I, we're led to believe that the bullet likely went straight through the, uh, the diplomat. And uh, again, this, this is Russia getting involved in Syria, which of course our country, uh, our leader Obama has wanted us to get deeper and deeper involved in all the time. When you do, you end up with things like this, which is why it might be good for us to leave that area, maybe work within NATO, which I really wish we would leave, but if we must work within that construct, uh, you can hear me speak more on that on the media speaks from yesterday. Um, date of the 18th. You can see clearly that if when other countries get entangled with the mess that is Syria in the Middle East, then there are repercussions because the people are more like animals than people, this radicalized side of Islam that we are seeing, much more like a pig than a man. Um, the gunman who shot the Russian ambassador to Turkey in an attack at an art gallery on Monday was an off-duty police officer who worked in the Turkish capital to security forces toward Reuters. Russia's foreign ministry earlier confirmed that the ambassador Andrew Karlov had died in the attack. Turkish state media earlier reported that the gunman had been neutralized following the attack. Yeah. How about the fact that he was screaming Allah Akbar over and over and over again? You don't hear any reference of it at all here. Isn't that rather amazing? I am showing it here on the... Uh, Turkey, Andre Karlov, on the, uh, was shot and killed while attending an art exhibit in Turkey's capital city of Ankara. Listen. As you can see, it was all caught on this dramatic and graphic video. The gunman wearing a suit standing behind the podium where the ambassador was speaking can be heard shouting Allah Akbar after carrying out the assassination. Allah Akbar. Now, isn't that interesting that they don't mention it in the article, though, do they? No, they keep that nicely hidden. We mustn't let anybody think that Islam could be a problem. We're going to refer to the Quran as the Holy Quran. Meanwhile, we're going to release television shows that all but urinate on the Bible. You know, and again, I, I'm a big horror movie fan. I don't have a problem with it. Um... If it wasn't always the Christians that got it, you know what? I probably wouldn't have a problem with the new American horror story. No, I'm not in favor of banning it. I'm not in favor of labeling it. I'm not in favor of making it illegal to watch it or putting PMRC stickers on DVDs. None of that crap. It's the First, Amer it's the First Amendment. You can make whatever you want. My point here is, isn't it interesting that you can do any crappy thing you want like the, you know, the sexualized nuns or whatever in American Horror Story. It's fiction. It's fine. I don't, I don't personally have a problem with it. But what if, what if it was the Quran that we were talking about that gets thrown like the Bible did? And it, we have this reverence here for a religion that has reverence for no one else among a very large number of its practitioners. And that, I think, is a glaring problem. And then we hide it in the media. We don't say that he was saying Allah Akbar. You have to click on the video to get it. Most people know the video's playing nonstop anyway, so you shut those off right away. They know that. They know that full and well, actually. It's part of how they keep you dumbed down and stupid. 
Friends, uh, this is also from Yahoo.com. I found this while searching the last one, and I thought, well, this adorable creature gets a picture on the show. Rainbow snake, tiny frog, among the other Mekong species. Uh, there are new species found. A rainbow-headed snake, which, as you'll see in a minute, I don't know if the one I'm about to show you is um, the new species or not. But if it was, you can certainly wonder how in seven hells it had been missed. It's as bright as the rainbow. Anyway, uh, this is from Bangkok. Please don't. A rainbow-headed snake, a tiny frog, and a lizard with dragon-like horns are among more than 150 new species confirmed by scientists last year in the ecologically diverse but threatened to be calm region. Uh, this is what researchers said on Monday. Still finding new species in the world. Fascinating. Windy winding its way from the Taliban Plateau through the mountains and jungles of Northeast Asia, the Mekong River helps sustain one of the most diverse regions on the entire planet. Each year, scientists announce new species after an often lengthy identification process, highlighting how much more there is to learn about the region. Christelle put that cigarette out. But there are fears many species may die out before being discovered in an area of the world that is rapidly developing where rule of laws notoriously shaky and wildlife smuggling is rampant. And again, with some of the creatures they found here, uh, among them are the eye-catching Paraflamimbrios leo, a snake found in the limestone karsts of northern Laos, where s whose scales reflect rainbow-like colors around its head. On the Thai tourist island of, believe it or not, it's called Phuket, P-H-U-K-E-T. It's called Phuket. What am I going to do? P-H-U-K-E-T. And the Thai tourist island of Phuket, which has been a huge development in recent decades, scientists found a lizard with a fearsome-looking ridge of horns down its head and neck. It's the Ankatharosaura phuketanisis, no less. Uh, that's great. They're on the, uh, the good island of Phuket. I've been there a lot. Um, in Cambodia, in Vietnam, a new frog species has been spotted in 2006, but peer-reviewed confirmation that it is indeed a new species took a decade. Clearly, they were promptly there. I've never heard of DNA, I guess. Um, look at this. Uh, there's a picture of this gorgeous rainbow snake. I'm going to scan past it because with the Christmas tree up, you guys on high def aren't getting it. Uh, beautiful, beautiful snakes there. And that brings us to the Dumdy of the Day. <laughs> Dumdy of the Day, friends, again brought to you by the day the lights went out, D. Allen Ross. You are an idiot. Why am I calling an idiot today? Uh, people that deserve it, my friends. Uh, people that deserve it. Uh, mainly, I mean, people in the video, if you click on the video here on NewYorkCBSSocial.com, you hear people whining that the they didn't have the proper security at the movie theater. Well, you know what? The man didn't do anything. It looks like it was simply an intoxicated man, maybe who went into the wrong theater and stood there looking confused with what I'm assuming is a bag that he was going to eat out of and a cup of coffee or a soda or something. So, they see the man and this boneheaded woman goes, so I wondered what I would do if he had a gun. So I got up and ran. And of course every other bonehead ran out and followed her because the man that was confused may be a mad gunman. Now, the dummy also goes to the man who they thought was a mad gunman. Because we know that we live in a stupid country. We know this. We know that everything is viewed as a terrorist. It's going to be a terrorist. There wouldn't be this threat if people were allowed to bring guns into movie theaters. So if something like this happened, they might actually have some kind of defense. No, absolutely not. Uh, listen to this. Um... A man's bizarre behavior, yeah, standing in front of a screen, on a Saturday night showing of La La Land, which is where these people's heads were, prompted a stampede toward the exits of a theater in Regal Cinemas in Union Square Saturday night, because people are afraid of their own damn shadow because the government will not allow them to carry a gun to protect themselves. Or at least the theater won't. Folks who bought tickets for the showing are complaining that the cinema didn't handle the incident properly, 
Video posted on social media shows moviegoers searching for their belongings under seats and in the aisles. So they must not have been very afraid if they were grabbing their purses on the way out of what they thought must have been the gunman. Everything about this story is stupid. That's why it's getting the dumb of the day. A short time beforehand, about 200 people went stampeding towards the exits after eyewitnesses say a man holding a cup. Oh, oh God, another cup! And a bag! Oh! Walked up to the center of the movie screen and turned slowly while mumbling to himself. Probably, where the fuck am I? You know, the place where they found the snake. Uh, popcorn started flying, candy bars went flying through the air, people were jumping over their seats, said the moviegoer Ben Gilbert, who was sitting in the fourth row. One Twitter woman said that it was the worst nightmare. For about 30 seconds she thought she was going to die. Friends, there are two, two three takeaways from this. First of all, the movie theater cannot protect you from stupid. Second of all, there is a reason you have a right to carry a gun to protect yourself. I'm not saying pull the gun out and shoot him dead. I'm saying a calm reaction to a calm reaction. If the man is suspicious, then you keep keep close of where your gun is. You don't pull it out. You don't go whipping it out trying to be the hero of the day, riding in like the freaking cavalry. No. You calmly keep track of where your weapon is and watch what the person is doing. Maybe you don't go stampeding out the door. And if you are stampeding out the door, maybe you shouldn't stop and look for your purse or your cell phone. On the way out! Idiots everywhere you look, friends. I, that is the end, but don't go away because it's not the end if you're a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber, then hit subscribe because this I'm doing every day and it is all for you. The 12 days of Christmas. Um, I'm going to go to something very pleasant here. Um, how many of you realize that as we approach Christmas, we are at a time where the economy is doing worse in many ways than it's ever done before. We are seeing harm done to us via outsourcing. We are seeing harm brought to us from uh, just a very lackluster economy caused around here in this country by devaluation of currencies and all the things that, that Trump has talked about to get himself into office. Well, now that we have him in office, you know, maybe, maybe we'll see something a little bit different. Maybe we'll actually see progress within the nation. And maybe we'll see, you know, more people reaching out to help other people. Maybe we'll see something that involves employers once again caring about their employees. Because let's face it, if the businesses themselves bring in more money, unless we are talking about someone like an Ebenezer Scrooge, or we're talking about something dreadful like this, as a, a, a deep character flaw within a person, there are many people that are happy to treat their employees well, so long as they are themselves, themselves making money. And for that to happen, we need a good economy. And we need sound money. So I guess my Christmas message today is, hey, we got Trump, okay? And that's good news. That's damn good news. But that doesn't change the fact that there's a certain responsibility that lies with each and every American as well. There is there's a lot that we can do to help one another out. Uh, I, for instance, uh, as, again, uh, this is a personal part of the story because I'm talking to my subscribers, the unsettled souls who I'm happy to have. I own a property, and I needed to get it fixed. So did I go to the bank and take out a big fat loan that I have no way to pay back because half the time my water or gas is not all? That's true. Um, no. I put an ad up on Craigslist and I asked, hey, would you like to live in this house for free in return for fixing it? Why? Because there's a lot of people out there. There are contractors and people that do a lot of hard work. And there's no place for them to work at because the economy is dead. Well, I can't pay them, but I can make sure they have a place to stay. And they, in turn, can fix the place up with helps me. That's capitalism. That's a barter system. No, it doesn't involve the government. There's probably restrictions somewhere that would make that kind of thing illegal if you really wanted to dig. 
But it's important that we get by that. We just ignore certain laws if you have to. I know that's not very nice to say, but if the law goes against the Constitution, the law is unconstitutional. The law is getting to the point where it is getting in the way of private interactions among people to whom government is not invited. It is an A-B conversation, and they can probably see their way out of it. Maybe we should do that as we're near Christmas. Maybe we should look at ways that we can be able to help each other. Because I'll tell you, Donald Trump is not going to ride in with a magic wand and be able to repair this for us all overnight. It's going to take us remembering that we are, in fact, a United States. Because if we are a disunited States, Donald Trump is not going to be able to help us. That's my Christmas thought, Christmas thought for the day, friends. You can donate at the correct views of hotmail.com. You can do go through PayPal. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. Also, don't forget the contest it's running. Uh, look up the last Dunce Cap of the Month Award on Part 1. It's a two-part show. On Part 1, there is a uh, contest running. And I need you to pick the dumbest story from last year to win the Dunce Cap of the Year. And... Uh, leave, leave your pick in the comment line. I'm going to randomly pick somebody. You're going to get some cool prizes. This year, I'm keeping it a surprise. You're definitely going to get some passing time music. And you may get a song that's not even released. You may be the one. That, you may be the only one to get it for a moment. Uh, you're going to be getting stickers. You're going to be getting all kinds of cool stuff. So go to the last Dunce Cap of the Month award show. Pick the dumbest story of the year. Leave it in the comment line. Thank you for listening, friends. Please hit subscribe. Please hit share. And don't forget, I'll be dead honest. I had my water. I just got my water turned back on. My water was shut off. I spent most of the summer without any electric. I was boiling. It was in Ohio. So please do me a favor. You can donate at the correct views at hotmail.com. Look for more of your 12 days of Christmas posted tonight, friends. And God bless.